Hey everyone, this is Neil once again from the Overtalker magazine and today I'm here to talk to you about the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 7980X. And before we go into that, however, I would like to wish everyone a happy 2024, a fruitful 2024, because we have a lot of cool gear to look forward to this year, including APUs, CPUs and GPUs. And of course, all of this will be coming from AMD and their competitors, naturally. So... Before we go any further, I would just like to let you know that this CPU is really expensive if you're not aware of that already. So this is probably the most expensive CPU I've used in my life. And right now, if you want to buy it from Amazon, it's going to cost you 5000 800 us dollars including shipping and duties and if you want to buy it locally from Woodware, it's going to cost you 112,000 rand so obviously this is not a cheap cpu and in fact the rest of the platform isn't cheap the memory costs a bit and so do the motherboards as well the motherboard starts at 600 for the gigabyte aerod all the way to a thousand dollars for the asus sage motherboard and i think the ashrock motherboard which is actually kind of hard to find is 700 dollars but yeah, you are not dealing with an entry-level platform here. It's premium, it's workstation, so you should expect the pricing that matches that accordingly. Memory, 64 gigabytes of the Kingston Fury that I'm using, or Kingston Renegade rather, that I'm using actually costs $480. I'm not sure what the price is locally, but you can expect around 11 grand when it is here, or maybe even 12 grand, depending on the store that you're buying it from. So now that we have the pricing out of the way, let's just talk about the basics of the CPU. So this CPU has eight CCDs, each one with eight cores. You have 256 megabytes of L3 cache. You have four channels of DDR5 memory, and you have 88 PCI Express lanes. So how that's split up is 48 are going to be PCI Express Gen 5, and 32 are going to be PCI Express express gen 4 and then you're going to get the remaining 8 as PCI express gen 3 on top of it this is a new socket of course so that means it's not a drop-in upgrade or at least these cpus are not a drop-in upgrade for people who were owning the previous generation threadripper 5000 3000 or even 2000 series unfortunately so now that you have the basics of the cpu let's just not waste any time let's just get into the benchmarks so that when i talk to you afterwards on just my experience with the cpu you have some numbers to correlate to that experience it's not just something that's arbitrary so without further delay let go First benchmark is IDA64 memory bandwidth. Of course, four channels will always be two, so these results are expected. The 7980X gains a lot by simply enabling XMP on the Kingston DDR5 kit, and I've seen personally over 200 gigabytes per second in reads at DDR5 7000 and higher. And of course, latency was always going to favor the gaming CPU with the 14900K pulls ahead. XMP helps the Threadripper system, but it will struggle to reach 60 nanoseconds for the most part. The first rendering test is POV Ray, and it shows just how capable the 7980X is, delivering out the box nearly twice the performance of the 14900K. With some overclocking, the score increases by 8%. You'll notice that 8 to 10% is generally the performance improvement from overclocking. Not bad for keeping the TDP at 350 watts, and a testament to just how well opportunistic overclocking works via PBO. Next up is Cinebench R23 in the much tougher 2024 edition. The third Ripper CPU is 157% faster than the 14900K and with overclocking we gain an additional 7% in performance. Blender 3.6 tests are up next and this is perhaps where the Threadripper 7980X proves the most capable. I mean the performance over the desktop 14900K is staggering at 4 times the performance in the classroom subtest. V-Ray shows similar performance differences with the Threadripper 7980X offering 3 times the performance of the 14900K and with overclocking is nearly 4 times. The latest version of Corona Benchmark version 10 continues to show the same performance scaling at roughly 3 times the performance of arguably the most competent or capable desktop gaming CPU on the market today. Finally, we get to Handbrake, which isn't capable of taking advantage of all the cores or threads on the CPU. Still, the Threadripper 7980X manages to pull ahead of the 4900K, which is most unexpected. 3 Mark CPU profile test is another benchmark that I did not expect to scale the way that it did. In the single thread results, the 4900K is of course vastly superior, but at even 16 threads, the 7980X pulls ahead and even more so when all the threads are utilized. Keeping in mind that the CPU test isn't capable of loading all 128 threads of the CPU. 
Geekbench 6 is another one that gives the nod to the Threadripper CPU, but in only so far as the multi-core test is concerned. It too can extract maximum performance from the number of CPU threads, but it does gain a lot from increased memory bandwidth. The performance gain when overclocked is almost entirely due to the memory subsystem advantage. We finally get to one of three gaming benchmarks. For the Horizon 5 was surprising in that it actually performed better on the Threadripper CPU than it did on the 4900K. It's the only game to exhibit this behavior however. That said, if for some reason you're playing this game on this CPU, you'll get incredible performance that will be very hard to beat actually. In Cyberpunk, things are as expected, with the 4900K showing its massive superiority when it comes to gaming. There's simply no competition here. That said, 170 frames per second is always playable and is a respectable showing by the 7980X. Metro Exodus shows us once again why the Threadripper 7980X is not designed for gaming. The 4900K is offering performance that's worlds apart at up to 69 frames per second more than the 7980X can master, even when it's overclocked. Now, with gaming covered, we finally get to the CPU package power and temperature, which is rather interesting for me. Cinebench 2024 runs up against the TDP limit of the CPU, hence the 125 watts of the 4900K, which is what happens when the PL2 tau time is exhausted. For offering nearly three times the performance in this benchmark, the 350 watts for the Threadripper 7980X is more than compelling. In gaming, when using PBO, it's remarkable that the 7980X can sip less power than the 4900K can at just 137 watts. Impressive to say the least. Finally, we get to operating temperatures. Out of the box, the 7980X remains cool even when bouncing off its TDP or PPT limit. When using PBO, however, the operating temperature is not only lower but exceptionally so when gaming. 46 degrees Celsius under load is something I've not seen on any CPU in years, if ever. However, all of this is possible in part, again, because of the excellent Gigabyte Waterforce 2X360 cooler. It tamed the 7980X, of course, and it did it in style. All right, then. So you've seen the benchmarks. You've seen everything that I have to say. I actually rather I've said everything I have to say about the benchmarks and how the CPU performs and so forth. But the key takeaway for me in all of this is just how power efficient the CPU is. Now, I did try some extreme overclocking, but I didn't fare so well there. All the plans that I had were actually let down by the fact that number one, I didn't have the right mounting for the socket, but number two, I don't think this is the appropriate LN2 container for trying to cool this CPU. It's just simply not capable of withstanding the heat that you get when you've unlocked the CPU, or rather you would have to use liquid nitrogen and I didn't use that, I used dry ice. So there's some thermal limitations when it comes to what you can extract from the CPU. But nonetheless, I was still able to get, I think what should be the record for Cinebench. It's old, right? So Cinebench 11.5. I think I was able to get 182 points or something like that, which just puts that score above Massman's score, right? Hopefully at a later point, I'll be able to actually put the CPU through its paces and actually spend time with it and overclock it properly. So with that said though, when it comes to just regular usage of the CPU, I actually even used it for a little bit of gaming. I know it's not for that. And I actually found it is pretty capable i mean paired with the 7900 xtx this cpu produced some fairly decent results and in terms of actual in-game performance i couldn't tell the difference between gaming on this and gaming on the intel system even though synthetically that intel system is much faster when it comes to gaming but i couldn't actually tell the difference so if you are going to be gaming on this platform which i would not be you're going to get pretty decent performance so you have nothing to worry about there but nonetheless that's all i have to say about the amd ryzen threadripper 7980x a fantastic cpu yes it costs a fortune and i can imagine most of us just even here are not the target demographic for this but the fact that it exists is exciting and i think it should spur the competition to bring out a competing platform so that we can actually see who's who in the zoo as they say right so with that said let me know what you guys think of thread ripper are any of you even considering such a system and if you did consider it would it be this cpu or would it be the smaller cpus either way let me know in the comments below and remember to share like subscribe as usual and until next time take care of yourselves and peace